number one. Because in which my only job is to marry rich. My father has no sense, so I'm the one who has a social climb for work. I'm the oldest and the wittiest and the gossip in New York City is insidious. And Alexander is penniless. Ha! Ah, that doesn't mean I want to marry less. Anyway. Moving on from Alexander Hamilton. We really like Hamilton. I can't tell. Welcome to Just Tribal Things. I'm Jenna. I'm Carissa. This is our short video of things that we've come up with that we think are just tribal things. Things that you only experience when you're in the tribe. Oh, my coffee. <laughs> Sit up. Texting with Nancy. Oh, my. Yeah. We mm. all love Nancy, but sometimes her text messages can get a little bit... Strange? Different. Yeah. Unusual. For instance... <laughs> Only when texting Nancy will you find out that Cousin Alex is getting a hysterectomy. <laughs> Mom, what's some other strange thing you've texted the family? Another term, of which we still cannot identify, is... <laughs> would you like to say it? I don't, I don't know the story behind this one. banjo Urea. <laughs> so she uses Siri to text all the time, and we just get the strangest <laughs> messages. Like, banjo urea, and Alex is getting a hysterectomy, which if you don't know what a hysterectomy is, good. Alex definitely doesn't need one. Moral of the story. Don't use Siri. Don't text. Nancy. Tribal thing number two. The Graves Vine. Carissa, would you like to explain what the Graves Vine is? Sure. The Graves Vine is basically when one person says something very private to another person. And then everyone knows about it. Very quickly, I might add. Literally, because one person calls one person who calls another person who calls 10 people who call 20 people, and then suddenly the whole tribe knows about everything. The next tribal thing is having way too many inside jokes with your cousin. We are chicken. Epicus Pentecost. And a Scotsman. <laughs> okay, okay. okay, the steep slope. Where my skin was expo- this is not- there's no momentum for this whatsoever. There's really not. Okay, let's just try to- let's read them. We're gonna read as many of our inside jokes as we possibly think of. So you can read one and then I'll read the next one. The steep slope. Okay, we have to like- THE STEEP SLOPE! Okay. THE STEEP SLOPE! Epic is Pentagon! Chocolate gravy! Human eyes! S uh, salmon! Fish boys! Books! What's in your purse? The pharaoh's daughter! What's in the bag? Boy! Grow fur! Yerp! And a Scotsman. <laughs> so, Jesse, if you're watching this, Adagio and Fat Boys and Dweek and somebody has stolen three of my time! Just tribal thing number four. Texting and FaceTiming your cousins more than you text your boyfriend. This one is specifically for me because I'm pretty sure I'm the only one currently with a boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Most people are married or just too young to date. If you look at my phone records, you will see more texts to Carissa than to Brandon, who is my boyfriend. Just tribal thing number five. Being awkwardly close to your second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, etc. Cousins. Why? In the tribe, we are all one organism. Basically, we're very close to our extended family. Yes. More than the average person. Mm -hmm. I almost said animal. <laughs> <laughs> Just tribal thing number six. Calling each and every single one of your aunts when something major happens because your aunts are like, like, like second moms and they need to know every detail of your life. For instance, my Aunt Jen helped me have my first legitimate conversation with my boyfriend over text message. Because, really? yeah, she was, we were on the phone with her, because I was trying to think of something, like, witty to say to, because Brandon was texting me, and we were trying to think of something, like, witty and clever and, like, flirtatious to send back. So we had Jen on speakerphone, and as Brandon was texting, we would, like, figure out how to, it was very funny. Just tribal thing number seven. Knowing everything you could possibly ever want to know about trains and Legos and, and Pirates of the Caribbean. And more than you want to know. Yes. We are like sponges, us tribe members. 
We soak up knowledge and absorb it until it consumes us. Tribal thing number eight. That was actually like a perfect hand motion there. Because tribal thing number eight is having like an instant on-call prayer chain whenever you need it because our family is just so like close and so like spiritually in touch with each other I feel mm -hmm. like. Like I feel like that's the main force of why even though we're such a big family we're so close mm -hmm. is because we just are connected like through the Holy Spirit and well, any yeah. Anytime any one of us visits each other we always go to each other's church mm -hmm. and we just we worship together i remember once at a family reunion we had our own church service because i mean mm -hmm. there's like three pastors in the family i did that too but not with you a couple worship leaders yeah what else do we have missionaries missionaries we're very spiritually in tune family so anytime you need it you can like call someone use the graves vine and then prayer chain that was very enthusiastic. It was very, you almost killed me. I'm sorry. I'll pray for you. <laughs> so will the rest of the family. <laughs> Just tribal thing number nine is... Christmas Eve dinners, which I feel like you need to explain. because Christmas Eve thing. dinner is a huge tradition in the West Coast chapter of the tribe. At my house, actually. Yeah. My house at Christmas time turns into, like, Macy's. Because my mother collects nutcrackers. My father has his angels. We had seven Christmas trees last year, I think. Yeah, one for every room. One for every room that you were in, except I think the bathroom. Yeah, there wasn't one in the bathroom. Yeah, that would be weird. Yeah. I think we did have like Christmas tree scented air freshener though. You had a candle in there. Right. Always like whole, have these insane family Christmas get togethers that are like absolutely mandatory and you can't miss them. And the one year that you were going to miss, we just had, we did it early. We just had Christmas, like, a couple weeks early. We still celebrated Christmas individually on Christmas, but we yeah. had the family Christmas early. So, we always get dressed up in, like, our Christmas best. Like, that's a big deal, is going to the mm -hmm. mall to find the Christmas dress. We spend, like, a day doing that. That took forever last year. Yeah. There's all the decorating that has to be done. And then there's Christmas dinner. And then there's... One of my favorite traditions, the Christmas Eve play. I have videos of almost every Christmas Eve play except like three. And the Christmas Eve plays are something that started with dear little old me. You're gonna poke my eye out. Every year, the cousins, and occasionally Jesse and Alex, eh. had to get together and create a Christmas play. So sometimes we would do musicals, sometimes we would do movies, Sometimes we would do plays, fun for us. We always come up, we make little programs and then we invite everyone into the theater at the appropriate viewing time, which is either the living room because it has a TV or when we used to have a stage in the family room or wherever it was either being performed or played. played. Um, and then we would hand out the programs and like seating charts and stuff and like the fake little plastic Oscars. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a very big deal. It was like, like watching a Hallmark movie, but made by me. The last part, I think, the important part. Oh, there's two more. And then we do the cake, which is prepared by me and Carissa, usually. Mostly, you. Mostly me. Um, but she helps come up with the concept. Um, we spend a whole year planning this elaborate cake. Um, last year's was the best. Last year's was pretty darn adorable. Well, the one before that was yeah but it's always like a different cake and then we always buy candles and then we always sing happy birthday jesus but the version by the mormon tabernacle choir not just like your typical happy birthday mm -hmm. song happy birthday jesus by the mormon tabernacle choir look it up we always get together and everyone always cries and it's just very touching and that is like a large part of christmas eve and then finally the moment we've all been waiting for santa claus comes and he always brings the same thing! Pajamas! We go car caroling. Or we go car caroling! How could I have forgotten car caroling? I don't know, we didn't do it last year. Car caroling is this insane tradition that started with me and cousin Jesse. Um, and basically you get in the car, you roll all the windows down, everyone gets in the car, rolls all the windows down, turns the Christmas music station or playlist, rather, whichever whatever, one. Whatever you have yeah, there. Yeah, all the way up. 
and then sing at the top of your ugliest lung voice, like... Or with an auto tune microphone. Yeah. Out the windows, all the most obnoxious Christmas carols you can find, um, and it's just a blast. Tribal thing number 10 is elaborate costume parties. Oh yeah. If you know anything about us, whenever we plan a birthday party, it usually ends up being a costume party. I've had a pirate themed birthday party, a Downton Abbey party, a Doctor Who sci-fi themed party, an Alvin and the Chipmunks party. She had a biblical themed costume party. Yes, I did. So that is our Just Tribal Things video. We hope you liked it. Yeah. Yeah, do you have anything you want to say? Not really. I mean, is there anything else you say? Not really. Well then. Yeah. Let's go. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Um, if you're a tribe member, I hope you can relate to at least a few things. I'm pretty sure we've all received a strangely awkward text from Nancy. If you have, tell us what it is in the comments. Like and subscribe for more tribe-related content. And we love you all.